Yeehaw! We are back with another daily reflection on the daily Vedantic. And this is a reflection on one of the cornerstones of this philosophy. There were two cornerstones, two sound bites that I find myself repeating over and over and over again with students here in LA, with people writing in notes and DMs. It would be around these two concepts. The first one will have its own episode shortly. It's, a, it's so common. It's on the question of if I do this, is this right? If someone does this, is this right or wrong? And it really comes down to it's not what you do, it's what you do it for. It's not what we do, it's what are we doing it for? Someone could take a knife, cut into someone else, and that person die. Is that right or wrong? Vedanta would say, it's not what you do, it's what you do it for. That could be someone robbing another, or it could be an example of a surgeon performing an emergency surgery to try to save someone's life. The intention is all that matters, which is so contrary to the culture we live in that says, tries to convince us that it is all about the act. Intention doesn't matter. This philosophy for thousands of years has made it very clear. Intention is what matters. You might make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time because we might have the right intention and perform the wrong act. That might agitate you enough to, to learn what is the right act, to map to the right intention. But that is required for a novice to become an expert, to go through doing something poorly with the right intention. Because a selfless expert is doing the right thing in the right way with the right intention. And that's what we should all aim to do with our crafts with our vocations, with our careers. But the other cornerstone of this philosophy that comes up over and over and over again, especially when it deals with reality and our inability, according to this philosophy, to perceive reality. The philosophy goes back to the example of the dream. We're told that none of this is real, that what we are perceiving is not reality. And to be able to perceive reality, that is enlightenment. When you first hear this, it feels unbelievable, feels impossible. It's just such common sense that what is real is what we can perceive in front of us, this table. This table is, and obviously is real because I can perceive it. That is the argument we make in our heads. That is the argument that people make in group discussions within this philosophy. Outside of this philosophy, it's like I said, it's common sense. If you can perceive it, it's what you're seeing, holding, smelling, tasting, then it must be real. But the example that this philosophy points to, and thank God we have this example, is the dream. We're told that this state is just an elevated version of a dream. Last night, let's say you can remember one of your dreams from last night. I know, I do. And you saw things. You felt things. There was gravity. Everybody was wearing shoes. People had different articles of clothing on. There are four walls to a room. Maybe you walked from one room into another. There were all of these perceptions. You could hear what someone was saying to you. You could speak back to them. It was replete with perception, not to the degree of this elevated version of a dream, but it is such a great analog. 
to how we can be convinced that what we are perceiving is real, like so many of us do with each dream that we have. And yet, our perceptions have nothing to do with reality. You're lying in a bed somewhere, not in conversation with a coworker, in some strange room, around some strange dramatic plot. That dream is a complete projection of your mind. And just like this elevated version of it, you don't know what's about to happen. You've created the entire universe that you are perceiving in that dream, and yet you don't know what is about to happen. The drama that might unfold. This waking state, as it's called, is just like that dream. And what's so funny for all of us, myself included, is that you have that dream, you wake up, you realize, oh, that was just a dream, none of it was real. You have a visceral experience where your perceptions deceived you, and yet five minutes later, you put your feet on the ground, you get out of bed, and you look around and you say, well, of course this is real because I'm perceiving it. That's the absurdness of trusting our perceptions to tell us what is real. And if we can understand the absurdness of the dream experience, as Swami will say often at the ashram, you don't need any of the books. You don't need any of the philosophy. I'll say that again. If we can understand the absurdness of the dream experience, then in the waking state, we don't need any of the books or any of the philosophy. That is today's reflection on the daily Vedantic. We'll see you next time.